Hey there. I am overdue sending out a little demo on robotic feeding, what we call step feeding analysis. So what I'd like to do is just spend a little time showing you what we've developed and some of the features that have been added on. Um, I got this from an international friend. It's actually a diet Armano had been working with. So it is in metric, and I'm going to change it over to English right up here just because I can, and that way I can understand it better. He has basically um, looked at a stuff, a lot of the information from Dr. Greg Penner, um, looking at robotic setup, robotic uh, um, calculations, and, and um, methodology of setting up diets. So the herd is basically milking at 72 um, pounds. Uh, they're out in liters, but we're going to take that liberty again to change it over to English. But this is the actual production at the dairy. The model is dialed in. Let me get rid of that function real quick so it doesn't drive me crazy. So page layout, switch that off. So now, so we're at 72 and 72 pounds, the way it's formulated. So Armano basically balanced the PMR and is showing one robot. So what I'll do is unclick this. And again, in, as part of a review, all the feeds are listed in the dry matter intake of the total here, but the dry matter pounds of the TMR which is now the PMR, is up here. The robot feed is unclicked, so it's not part of the TMR. So that 2.64 pounds is reflected in the dry matter intake, but not in the PMR. So he is including 2.5 pounds or so into, you know, into the ration of the average animal. He's got it balanced for what the herd is doing. So if I go over to the step feeding now, what I can do is I can go in. Here is the robotic grain starting in at the, at the minimum. And uh, in discussions with him, you know, and, and some of the pinner data said there should be a max of, you know, six, six kilos for um you know fed through the robot for efficiency consistency um again we need to probably get that paper and uh, put it on the website so what i can do is i can choose um let me go to 120 pounds or 130 pounds of milk oops 130 pounds of milk and just for today's example i'm going to go in 8 pound increments so part of some of the issue has always been the way that the, the um, well-being tab is set up inside of your NDS. And I think part of understanding the robotic system is the safety thresholds that we have and then again, what is the well-being tab look like? So if you have not set up the well-being tab with some parameters for robot animals, you may be kind of frustrated. So again, I can go back to my main menu, utility, go to the well-being risk, and I've really opened up a lot of the parameters in my well-being tab. Again, the um, predicted um, time below 5.8, I have changed mine. This is a real stumbler here. So I will put the upper borderline at six hours and the upper critical at seven. Some of my starch numbers and my PENDF I've changed around and we that's for another discussion. We have actually imported and exported this, so this does work. It's a nice function that 
you know, if needed, I could send my list out to somebody else and that can be used by um, importing that list. But now let's go back to the to the robotic feeding. I'm going to max that yield at 130 with eight pound increments. Guided flow, maybe um, let's leave it at three. And again, this is just for the mathematics and let's hit proceed. Program is thinking. Again, this is a well-balanced diet that Hermano has worked on. What he did is he created this robot mix with the functionality that he can um, make 130 pounds of milk. So here's my increments. And again, I ask for eight pounds. So 71 to 79 to 87 to 95, 103. You can see right up the chart here. And what I what I see right right now is that the dry matter pounds of intake are showing here, and then the amount of the PMR is listed here. So, you know, we've gone from 48, 53, 55, 57, a nice increase. And what I might not like is this little static robotic grain amount here. So what I can do is I can go to allow changes right away. If my min's 2.65, I can manipulate the the system to say, okay, I'm asking for, you know, this in eight pound increments. So I might actually be overfeeding a little bit here. Um, I can go here and say, you know, four. I can go here to 4.25, and I can go here to 4.5. And my total dry matter intake is here, PMR is here, and I can give this graded schedule then and look at pounds of milk, ME and MP produced here. I can say, okay, the only violation I did was the time below 5.8 was 6.2, which was my lower threshold or my upper threshold. My critical was seven, so it's pink and not red. Total starch is here. Um, ruminal pH is here. PENDF, that's what I was selecting. I can select forage and PENDF. So here's what I get from the system. And again, um, a lot of issues with diets are, you know, reported back to us that we're, this is not working, where it's actually a formulation issue. As you can see in this scenario, I'm actually over-formulating on a lot of this. And so, you know, different different functionality if we wanted to, go down through but this is just one feature that I've used quite a bit here in being able to allow changes. The other thing that you can do is hold your your PMR constant and then adjust the amount here. And so with this scenario I can do this and rerun it and look and see if my results are any better. Still the same 2.65, and what, I, what I'd prefer is to pop over here, and then I can change this to 3.5. Again, it will lower my PMR and keep my dry matter intake the same. So again, if I change this to 4, just lowering that amount here. And again, the computer found us some solutions. You know, this is an easier way to report this back to producers. The one thing I may want to do is I'm going to cut this down just for the demonstration. And I'm going to run that at 10 pound increments. And so I still have my 71 to 121. And I'm going to go through and do my hand correction here. All right. So here is a good feeding schedule I might give to a 
producer, what I can do is I can go through the multi-step here. What what we've actually done after discussions, Armano and the Ruman Group has looked at if this is the average production on the dairy as described, what do the animal parameters do for a cow producing 120 pounds of milk, 100, you know, 30 pounds of milk? Is that actual production um, of that animal at the pounds of fat, pounds of protein, or percentages and days in milk? If you click up here on animal parameters, you can see what we've done is taken the total the protein percent and the total fat down to make the calculations work out and also the days of calving. This is an assumption that you can change body condition score also there, but you can manipulate this if you go to multitask system, which is a new tab. So now we're incorporating the step feeding system with the multitasking step. And so what you can do is, and the reason I did down to six categories was basically just for the presentation to demonstrate to you that now this information is being brought over to the step, the multitasking. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six steps with the outcomes down below and with the analysis down below. So again, I can go down through here and say, you know, the NDFs are all listed across here. And what I can do then is I can look the crude proteins are all listed here across the top. And whatever my parameters are, are listed. So, what I can do from here, and this was initially a user's idea that came back to us and the Ruman group incorporated in there, is I can go to the animal inputs here. Now the functionality is that I can see a lot of, a lot of information here that really pertains to this herd. So I can go clear over here and say, okay, this group that is milking 120-ish, I can look the average days in milk. I can change this here. I can manipulate this. I can actually look at body condition change. So if those are three going to 2.8, what I can see is that I can change this functionality here within the system. These cows might be losing to 2.9. If I want to change that fat and protein, I can change that if I don't believe that. You know, this cow being 48 days in milk, maybe she is right now at a 3.2 going to, you know, 2.8 in the next 40 days. So this will as I go back to outcomes, then it will change these parameters on production as I have changed the description of the cow. The idea of incorporating these two systems is that, and it was a phenomenal observation, is that this animal is 71 pounds or 72 pounds of milk is not the same animal that's milking 120, just having an intake difference, but is totally different due to the fact that um, this animal is totally different per parameters in the herd, fresh, days fresh, days carried calf, body weight loss. We can even, I think we can still manipulate this to say if she would eat 52 pounds of the PMR, 12 pounds of the robot grain, and have a 64 pound intake, where is that going to lie? 
Now, the same can be conversely demonstrated to a producer is that if she's only eating 45 pounds of PMR and someone's allowing her to eat 15 pounds of robot, we will get milk production. But what do we do to the forage, the ANDF forage compared to what we think it is? And again, if we just played with that scenario, what happens if she's only eating 40 uh, pounds TMR that day and someone's allowing her to eat 18 pounds of pellet, then we are very low comparatively than what we thought on our total NDF. And we could look at starch percentages over what we thought and some of that information. But again, it allows us some functionality here to, to manipulate this system. And so we can work with that system there. And again, the idea is going to animal inputs, changing these animal inputs to match up to the, to the animal. And again, this, this animal may actually, you know, be putting on a little body weight and that can be described. She may, in fact, have a higher fat test than than milk. Um, you know, than the 70 pounds of milk, she may be putting on some body weight and higher fat. But again, he set up the base diet to show that animal. So just using that, going back and forth, looking at the two systems and how they work together. and you can actually use two different two different grains or two different feeds in this system here but those are the the kind of the newer developments just looking at the step feeding and um, one thing i have done with guys is to go ahead and create a report under options yeah, you can see my report. Basically, you can go to options, properties, and then what you can do, like I have done, is I have taken, I'm showing only the cost. I took all the fermented, all the starch parameters, all the ruminal parameters, and I took even the allowable milk, ME and MP out, if you wanted to show those again, basically. You can put those in to show the producers, you know, that capability. And this would be a report that I have used with some around the barn feeders, not robotic feeders. But um, looking at, at, again, this is a function of how much of the robot feed versus with the amounts per day if they're getting uh, allocate, allocated three times a day. And so just wanted to show that and update everybody where we are on step feeding. So if you have any questions, give me an email back. Thanks.